TCP was built to try to make the internet more reliable. But there's this interesting question here, which is, why are packets dropped at all? I mean, why? Why are they dropped? Where are they dropped? What causes this? Um, and there's also a sort of some modern questions about, is TCP responding the right way? But let's talk about this fundamental mystery of the internet. Why are packets dropped? I send a packet from point A, and it never arrives at point B. What happened to it along the way? So. For a while, the question of dropping had, was largely a question that we considered in the context of the wired internet. Now that a lot of our connections are wireless, we have this whole new source of potential packet loss. And so it's useful to think about this question in two ways. The first uh, way is, what happens, why do packets get dropped in the wired core of the internet? And the second question is, why do packets get dropped over wireless connections? So let's talk about the wired core of the internet first. Um, most, you know, once you get 100 meters away from most network jacks, or you know, maybe if you're at home, a kilometer, you're onto a fiber optic connection. And that connection probably gets you almost all the way to your destination. Those parts of the internet, those connections, are extremely well engineered. And so one of the places where packets normally do not get dropped is along these connections themselves. That's possible. In certain cases, there's interference or there's some sort of noise in the system that could cause the packet to get corrupted and I would have to discard it. But it doesn't happen very often. So within the core of the internet, the place where packets get dropped is at routers. Routers drop packets. And why do routers drop packets? Well, routers drop packets because it's a, it's a computer, and the computer is sitting there trying to do this one thing over and over again as fast as possible, and sometimes data just arrives too fast for that router to keep up. There's too many packets arriving, I've run out of space, I don't have anywhere else to put them, and I start to drop them. So congestion, and, and that sort of drop, drops at routers, that's caused by congestion. That's caused by there being too much traffic for some reason at some point in time flowing down this one link. Maybe it's 8 p.m. and everybody's downloading their Netflix movies or something, but at some point, routers will drop packets. And so within the wired core of the internet, the answer to why are packets dropped is pretty much you know, buffer overflows at routers. Routers run out of space to store packets before they can forward them, and they drop them. And that's really the primary reason within the wired core of the internet. And to some degree, that's the reason that TCP is built around. So TCP's response to packet loss is really predicated on this idea that loss is caused by congestion. Unfortunately, now that we live in the wired, wireless world where most of our initial connections to the internet are across these wireless networks, we have introduced this whole new uh, place where packets can be dropped. Now, uh, wireless connections have some of the same congestion problems that wired networks do. So if you're using a wireless connection and suddenly five people around you start streaming a movie or downloading a huge you know, virtual appliance or something like that, um, your connection is going to be affected. And there may be some drops, there may be some slowdowns. So that can happen. So congestion can happen over wireless networks as well. Um, but there's also all sorts of other reasons that, and, and different types of interference that plague wireless connections that don't really happen in the core of the internet. So for example, on typical wireless frequencies, the, those connections can actually be, can be uh, blocked by walls, they can be blocked by large pieces of metal like a refrigerator, uh, microwaves can interfere with those connections. If you turn on your microwave, the bandwidth might go down. Um, you're transmitting through free space and there's all this other electromagnetic radiation that's all around us that's interfering with those connections. Um, and so parts of the packet can be corrupted, the entire packet might not be heard. Mobility also plays a really important role too, right? So let's take away this sort of boring stationary computer and replace it with something a little more interesting. This is a, this is a smartphone, right? As you're walking around, you're getting closer to routers, you're getting farther away from routers. Um, the signal, the signal that's received by the wireless router that you're communicating with, if you go farther away, it's harder for the router to hear that signal, and it's possible that some of the packets that you're trying to transmit don't quite make it. The router quite, can't quite hear them, and so this is another source of packet loss. So one of the things that's interesting about transport protocols in the modern world is that they were really designed around this assumption that packets are dropped because of congestion at routers. And now that we have a lot more wireless connections, that is assumption isn't necessarily as strong as it used to be. 
but within the core internet, packets get dropped at routers because of congestion, because of overruns. Within the wireless part of the internet, there's all sorts of other things that can happen.